So by and large, uh, people with epilepsy are not at an increased risk of developing COVID-19 in comparison to the general population once uh, we stick to all the public health guidelines that we know so well at this point. However, um, if somebody with epilepsy is unlucky enough to get COVID and become very unwell, for example, have high fevers, uh, then obviously that could potentially trigger seizures because we know that fever, any fever, is a potential trigger for some individuals uh, in terms of um, bringing on a seizure. So that would be a concern that I would have and obviously people don't want to develop COVID um, but I, there is no data for example that people with epilepsy who develop COVID are at an increased risk of serious outcomes such as um, being admitted to hospital or being admitted to the intensive care unit but I would have uh, concerns about the fever being a significant seizure uh, trigger and indeed again like any fever whether it's from an influenza or whether from a urinary tract infection if you do get a fever from a, an infection um, rest up fluids uh, paracetamol every six hours to try and keep your fever um, at bay and under control so that you uh, have a less or no fever and therefore less chance of a breakthrough seizure. So in terms of when people with epilepsy um, or other groups indeed will be vaccinated, I mean that's not clear because that's dependent on vaccine supply and if you watch the news or prime time every night then that will be clear that um, you really can't say exactly when the whole vaccine rollout will, will be completed. Uh, people may be aware that the HSE have um, 15 priority groups in terms of uh, priority of vaccination. And uh, we are currently uh, vaccinating um, groups one and two and groups three, which are individuals greater than 70, um, hopefully will start uh, being vaccinated um, next week as we talk here uh, on, on the, towards the middle of February. Uh, in terms of individuals with epilepsy, in my view, uh, individuals with epilepsy come under chronic medical conditions because it's a chronic medical condition, it's a chronic neurological condition, uh, and they're, they're divided into two priority groups uh, of the 15 priority groups, and that's based on age. So priority five in the HSE allocation group would be individuals 65 and older who have chronic medical uh, conditions um, and 65 and older and people with chronic medical conditions would actually get priority within that group five then uh, if you have epilepsy and you're 65 or older then I think it is uh, very reasonable and very appropriate that you go forward for vaccination at that stage as a priority within group five. If you're younger than 65, and I suppose many individuals with epilepsy in Ireland are younger than 65, in my view, you fall into category seven, which is basically people under 65 years of age who've got a chronic medical condition, i.e. chronic neurological condition, i.e. epilepsy as an important example. So you really, uh, we really need to, um, Say, say to people with epilepsy and their families just to keep an eye out on um, Department of Health and HSE uh, uh, um, advertisements and, and public information, uh, things on television, etc., to know exactly um, when Category 5 and then Category 7 are going to take place. And then I think the way it's happening is that um, people will go forward uh, through their general practitioner and whether there's a local vaccination centre, etc., to go and actually get the vaccine um, at, at that point. So, um, certainly I know there is some, uh, what we might call vaccine hesitancy among some individuals, and that's not unreasonable on one level. However, it must be uh, pointed out that any vaccine that will be used in Ireland will be approved by the European Medicines Agency. So this is an approved uh, vaccine um, or, or group of vaccines. And I myself would certainly encourage people to get the vaccine uh, for reasons uh, that are obvious in terms of keeping oneself safe, keeping one's family safe and opening up society again. Um, so uh, in terms of, again, I'm not obviously not a vaccine expert, but I know a 
the, the, the answers to the speed um, at which the vaccines were developed, I suppose, are twofold. Number one, there was so much more resources put in to the development of the vaccines by the individual uh, companies and the clinical trials were prioritized. And then number two, the actual analysis of the clinical trials by the regulatory authorities was also speeded up and a lot of the sort of traditional red tape was kind of uh, bypassed or, uh, um, so that the, 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 the red tape was, was, was cut short, so to speak. So uh, that's the way I would approach that. Um, but I certainly would encourage people um, to get the vaccine. And uh, although, of course, it's an individual's own uh, decision and that's, and that's the way it should be. Um, So there is no evidence and no real expectation that the vaccines will interfere or in any way uh, negatively interact with uh, the anti-epileptic drugs that individuals with epilepsy will be taking. So I can reassure people in that regard, there is no uh, interaction between the vaccine and the medications. Yeah, well, um, every uh, vaccine's potential side effects, um, including um, obviously pain at the injection site, uh, tiredness after the vaccine and, and fever after the vaccine. And for the vaccines that require two doses, such as the first vaccine that came uh, and was approved in Ireland, the uh, Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the risk of fever is higher after the second dose. Um, so I myself have been uh, fortunate enough to be vaccinated and um, I tolerated very well. I had a little bit of a sore arm afterwards, um, but I, I, felt, I felt well. But of course, any, any, any vaccine uh, can cause uh, the side effects like I've outlined because you're generating an immune response. That's the whole idea of uh, receiving a vaccine. And uh, as part of that immune response, uh, somebody may get a fever. So there's no evidence uh, in regard to people with epilepsy that one vaccine is um, more desirable than another. And we mentioned the allocation priority groups earlier on. And my advice would be that if you're going forward for vaccination, then you, you basically take the vaccine that's been offered uh, by the HSC at the time, because there's no evidence that uh, you need one versus the other. Yes, and this would be similar advice to any vaccination. Um, so my first piece of basic uh, advice would be plenty of rest before and after the vaccination. So I wouldn't be doing it on a stressful day where you're running around um, and then you have to go to the vaccine center and then you have to rush back to do two important Zoom meetings, etc. So you just need to kind of lock off today, take it nice and handy and just that day is just focused or that two days if you're getting two doses it just focus on getting the vaccine and leaving your body rest so plenty of rest before and after it would also be important i think to keep up your hydration which we should be doing anyway but plenty of fluids before and after and then the, the final uh, basic piece of advice is that because as i said earlier uh, the vaccine uh, generates an immune response that's what it that's what it's meant to do. Sometimes as part of that immune response, there can be a fever. So I would advise um, two paracetamol, roughly one hour before vaccination, and then roughly every six hours for 48 hours after vaccination. You don't have to wake yourself up out of sleep uh, to take paracetamol, but generally every six hours for 48 hours afterwards so that your um, the paracetamol is helping prevent any fever, which of course could potentially be a seizure trigger. But I, I really haven't heard it uh, as being um, an issue if you take those uh, basic uh, precautions. But of course, it is theoretically possible that uh, even with all that, you could take your paracetamol, you could rest up plenty of fluids, and you, and you might get a significant fever as part of the reaction, and it might trigger a seizure. That's always a possibility. But um, I think, uh, generally speaking, um, if you take the, the simple measures that I outlined, uh, it should go well.